Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Well, uh, what a fantastic morning. Absolutely glorious. Uh, the sun is shining. It's not as cold as what it was uh, yesterday morning. I've got to be quite honest. In fact, last night it was bitterly cold. It was uh, seven degrees Celsius last night, and uh, I had to go down yesterday to uh, collect my laptop. Uh, it wasn't ready, <laughs> so I came back. I've got to go back again today. Uh, but anyway, riding back, I was th I was absolutely freezing on my scooter, and I was thinking, you know what? In the summer. I would be driving back with just like a T-shirt on, uh, riding at, you know, these sort of times. But last night, I had about three layers of clothing on, big thick pair of gloves, a scarf, my helmet, and uh, I was still cold. But anyway, oh yeah, um, so yeah, looking lovely out there today. A um, little bit of cloud up in the skies, a uh, little bit misty as well. Bit of smoke as well from people still doing the olives as well. Uh, chickens all seem to be happy, pecking away down there as well, because the grass has all been cut back, so they can get and find the worms, because they all come to the surface. I still haven't walked on the grass there yet, to see if I'll sink up to my ankles uh, while trying to do a burning. Uh, round to the other side of the house this morning then. Let's have a quick look. Again, the sun is shining. Oh, it feels lovely in the heat. Oh, that feels gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. And again, looking out towards the direction of uh, Lagana and Kalamaki, it must be nice and warm down there this morning. And as you can see, if you can, with the sun not glinting in your eyes, a little bit of smoke there where the people are still doing the olives and burning the excess at the moment. So all in all, it's looking absolutely lovely today. And I've got some other, I've got something else to show you. All right. Uh, and I know a few people will be going, oh. Anyway, I don't want to show you that. That's bloody chickens this morning, making a mess. So I've got to clean that this morning. But anyway, look at this. Look at this. This is our mail today. Can I say thank you to the Hellenus uh, Post Office? Um, it's been a bit slow in coming. I know you guys have been under a lot of pressure. But look at this. Oh, all this mail. So if anybody sent us anything over Christmas, New Year, I've got a feeling... It has, it has all arrived, so we're going to have a bit of fun there, opening that up uh, and probably redoing Christmas. So those people here living on the island wondering where your mail is, um, it's on the way. It's on the way. They're doing as much as they can, as quickly as they can. <clears throat> right. OK, let's have a quick look at the news for today. Once again, can I just say thank you yesterday for... A lot of really interesting comments. I've got to say a quick hello to Florida, to uh, Les Paul over there. Thank you for your question yesterday. Uh, reference vaccines and friends of yours as well who've had injections. Um, I, I don't know if it's a compliment or whatever, but um, Les Paul likes tuning into the, my podcasts and he says some of the information that I've been passing to him has made him think about whether he has um the vaccine or not at this time uh, and again he's kind of um sitting on the fence a little bit and waiting to see uh, how things play out and as he said he didn't realize there was that many vaccines available and also as well do you get a choice which vaccine you have um again that's a question that's very hard to answer uh, we had a little chat as well a reference um uh, single payer health care Although he thinks it's socialism one step away from communism, but I've heard that argument from many Americans. Trust me, America deserves to have single payer health care. Uh, single payer health care, as I said in my little notes to you, is weaponized. OK, uh, you work in a low paying job and I will cite Walmart as one of them where, yes, we give you health cover uh, for your family. Uh, and uh, if you leave your job, use your health cover and that puts more pressure on you that you can't even go and look for another job that probably pays better because you don't want to lose your health coverage. Um, so, yeah, that's not fair. And also the other thing about Walmart as well is the fact that a lot of their employees are on food stamps and even though they work for them, there's a lot of uh, what I call poverty through employment at the moment in the world and a lot of that is unfair. Hang on a minute, I'd better let Boots in. I'm going to let Boots into the house. There you go. Mr. Boots, there you go. In you go. You're going in. You're going in. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, man, well, the door's ajar. All right, there you go. Right. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, let's get on with the news.
news for today about what is actually uh, going on. Right, so 20th of January, obviously, it's a Wednesday. It's day 75 of the lockdown and uh, COVID in the last 24 hours. Well, COVID in the last 24 hours, uh, interesting. Let's say uh, 566 new infections uh, recorded, uh, which is up from yesterday's uh, 320. Grand total at the moment, 149,462 of which 52% are men. Uh, 17 new infections were detected at entries into the country. Uh, that is uh, up from 15 yesterday. So um, that's uh, not looking too hot there either. Again, the interesting thing is, again, three days on the trot now, no actual information being published as to where the infections are around the country. Um, as of yet, no word that any more infections have been here in Zakynthos or any of the other Ionian islands at the moment, which is good. Uh, however, um, we again just trying, we've only had four positive cases of the virus since uh, January or since the beginning of the year, basically. So that, that's a positive for us here as well. Anyway, um, as for new deaths, um, I'm afraid new deaths is up. Uh, Today, um, 30 new deaths were reported. That's up from 19 from the day before, so that's quite a bit of a climb, actually. Uh, that means the total death rate since the pandemic started has been 5,518. Uh, the average age of those people that have passed is 79 years of age, and 95% of those had underlying health problems or were over the age of 70. Uh, of which uh, 3,254 were male and 2,264 were female. So our condolences to any families that have been affected on that. Now, um, as for critical cases in hospitals, that is actually down slightly at the moment, which again is a move in the right direction. Um, we have at the moment uh, 320 critical cases in hospital across the country, which is down from 322 uh, uh, on the last report, 225 of those are male, 95 of those are female. The average age of those people in ICUs across Greece at the moment is 69 years of age. Um, and 87% uh, of those have got underlying health conditions or are over the age of 70. So there you go. That is the COVID stats. Um, interestingly, uh, the European Vice President... Maratis uh, Shinas uh, stressed on Tuesday the benefits of the vaccination certificates and the coronavirus uh, amid the coronavirus pandemic, saying that uh, saying and indicated that such an initiative may be approved by the end of January. So it looks like Greece's idea about a vaccination certificate, the EU now is starting to take this rather seriously. Now, his comments came ahead of a meeting of EU leaders on Thursday that's coming up, in which a proposal made last week by the Greek Prime Minister, Mr Mitsotakis, for a European certificate showing when an individual has been vaccinated against uh, the coronavirus uh, will be discussed. Anyway, Shinas said we need vaccination certificates that would allow for a clear record of each individual's vaccination history to ensure the right medical follow-up. Anyway, a common EU approach to trusted, reliable and verifiable certificates would allow people to use their records in other EU member states. Anyway, it would also be it would also open the door, he says, to other uses and help lift restrictions. He added, pointing to one of the arguments put forward by the Greek Prime Minister, who said in a letter addressed to the EU Commissioner, uh, President Ursula von der Leyen, that a certificate of vaccination against COVID-19 would ensure the quickest possible re-establishment of freedom of movement between member states, but also with third countries. I think he's pointing towards the UK there. Anyway, Shindas also uh, has said that he, he and von der Leyen continue to work with member states on this common approach so that a discussion on certificates can be reached before the end of the month and allow member states in operable uh, certificates to be rapidly usable within the EU and beyond. Well, to be honest, mm, I, we, we've seen this coming. We, we know this is going to come at some point. Um, it's going to be how um, it's going to be enforced, i.e. if you don't have your certificate for COVID-19, um, 
will you obviously not be allowed to travel? Um, it should be your choice whether you get vaccinated or not. The other thing as well is um, in public places, will we see like a COVID inspection? If you want to go into the cinema or into a restaurant or into a bar, do you have to present a paper that says you've been inoculated against the virus? Uh, and once again, let's make this clear. These vaccines are not going to cure you of the virus. They're just going to help allay the symptoms of it. Uh, and if you do contract the virus, just basically give you a bit better chance or a bit of a, a help uh, with dealing with the symptoms and maybe give you a better chance of surviving. So, again, already we're seeing a, a sort of an about turn going on as to um, the effectiveness of the vaccines. And most of these vaccines, and again, I had this discussion with uh, uh, John Paul yesterday, um, they are only basically a, a LEMSIP against a cold, all right? They're not actually really um, helping, overly helping, but everybody seems to be now into this mindset of, oh, I've got to be vaccinated Oh, and I need a certificate to prove I'm vaccinated, so I'm safe to move here and I'm safe to move there. Don't forget, just a few days ago, the Greek Prime Minister was talking about reopening the ski resorts here uh, so that obviously the ski resorts here can start moving. So are we going to have to have a certificate to move to go to the ski resort? This is all. And I, I think what's happened as well, I think Mitsotakis is having his bit of a moment in the sun. Yes, you did a good job at the beginning of the virus, uh, fella. Uh, um, we're locking this down, everything else. And yes, our infection rate has been very low com uh, considering to everybody else in um, in in uh, uh, the world. However, uh, I think you're going just a bit too far now with the certificates thing, especially when I look at this next bit of news that comes up, which is local news. Uh, Hotel Owners Association of Zakynthos Municipality, Mr. Marius, uh, said on an interview on Ermi's radio yesterday that the tourist season opening from June, he sees the tourist seasoning opening from June onwards. Uh, the president of the uh, of the uh, association gave his mark of the assessments, emphasising the need for people to prepare locally. Now, he said under other circumstances after Christmas, he said, we'd see we'd have a lot to say about the market and messages. And we would have the first data from international tourism fairs and also from the British market. The holiday season was traditionally, he says, a time when many families closed their vacations, taking advantage of the available offers. He said, adding, this picture is now frozen. He said as well, there are no bookings. This is his words. Uh, there is a waiting, but there is also frustration as countries like Britain, Germany and France are in the eye of the storm when it comes to the pandemics. And the last thing the citizens of these countries think about is their holidays. Trust me, a lot of people on here are already thinking about their holidays and wanting basically to get away uh, from the madness that they're having in their own place. So at the moment, our man here is saying is that, uh, yeah, um, they're not seeing any action at the moment in regards to the hotels with their bookings, etc., as to what is going on. Anyway, the, the region of the Ionian Islands and Zakynthos have a very good health picture, he says, and this is a picture that should come out. Let's see how we can promote it and advertise it. Well, I like to think that I'm promoting and advertising it. Anyway, Mr. Marius also stated that the based on the data so far, May will not exist as a tourist destination. If it does exist this year, it will be in very small numbers. May is not a negligible month, nor is April. On the contrary, it is the month that lay the foundations for the rest of the tourist seasons. Now, normally, as you are aware, the season officially starts in May. We normally get our first direct flights from the UK towards the end of March and we have what I have termed the pre-season, which again does actually lay the foundation for the start of the season. People coming over to work, uh, people here on the islands, we get back quickly for that last little bit of uh, let, getting things ready for the summer. They take that opportunity and again, uh, we have tourists who come over in that part of the season because obviously it's quiet. Uh, things are on their way to being fully opened. 
And um, <clears throat> the island can be very pleasant, as in the pre-season, before all the, the hullabaloo of every man and his dog arriving. So, again, um, looking at what's being said, we're still yet to find out if we will be having flights. I've heard stories that flights are already starting to be cancelled. So um, the tour, op uh, the big tour tourist organisation here with the hoteliers is already saying uh, we're, we're looking at the season starting in June. So anyway, again, that's another little story that I'm going to keep an eye on. Uh, he also said, um, <clears throat> he said, uh, let me remind you that May 2019, we had 80,000 arrivals for Zakynthos. Tourism is expected to actually start in June. And if we catch some good percentages there, the start of season with the minus of 20% we're losing in April and May. So basically what he's saying, that's a bit Greeklish that is, uh, is that um, if we do start in June, we could actually see uh, a, a good turn, but that will depend on uh, the other factors of people getting here. One thing I do know is that a lot of villa companies now are not booking flights for their uh, guests. Guests are expected now to sort their own travel arrangements to get here uh, because a lot of the villa companies now dominantly put in the same um, uh, situation they had last year where flights were being cancelled by holiday companies and then of course these companies were then forced to have to give a refund to their guests that were coming on those flights and I don't think they want to get bitten again by that bug so now just be aware if you're booking a villa holiday now you'll be expected to organise your flight don't expect the villa company to say yeah we'll book your flight for you you have to do that yourself so that relieves them of their responsibility all they're interested in now is uh, giving you the accommodation, not giving you the flight. So I think there's going to be a lot of that going on as well uh, throughout the season. Anyway, did <clears throat> uh, you say anything else? Yeah. Um, also, he says uh, this year all the accommodation will be open, even from the middle of June, uh, even not boding well. The question is whether these businesses will be viable and have uh, the expected revenue. Because also, don't forget that a lot of these businesses, hotels, still haven't been paid from the likes of TUI. Uh, they've had some money, but not all of it. So, uh, again, it'll be interesting to see uh, which companies are still going to be, or oh, which hotels are still going to be able to be viable uh, when the season starts. And also businesses surrounding these places, uh, you know, bars, restaurants and that, uh, are they still in a viable position as well? Because don't forget, if the tourists ain't coming, they ain't going to be uh, turning and burning and making any money either. Anyway, it's important to continue to have support and and the sus uh, suspensions given in 2020 uh, to continue to 2021. It is a very difficult for a company to be able to cover the costs of 2021 and those that come from 2020. Regarding what needs to be done locally, he said, also, they're saying as well about the shipwreck, uh, we have to be ready and take care of our house. Uh, the shipwreck management agency, for example, will solve not solve all the problems overnight. Now, the, as you're probably aware, the shipwreck at the moment has been under a lot of um, uh, discussion here. Uh, basically, access to the shipwreck via the roads. The roads have been closed, basically, to the shipwreck as uh, there is work going on within that location. And it seems that uh, there was talk that the shipwreck might even be closed for the season as well, but only closed from looking at it from the top you know, down towards the bottom from where the little tourist information area and the little uh, market they have there. However, he does say, as the summer goes on, the shipwreck will be closed. He mentioned noting that the creation of the management body was a constant request of representatives of the island. No uh, one has disagreed with the body all this time. They may have thought it was another promise that would not yet be fulfilled. Now that we see that it is progressing, let us all unite around this effort and let there be no exclusions. In my opinion, it is clear that municipality and the church and the businessmen must participate. It is an institution that should unite us and not divide us. He hoped that concluding that no preparation has been made yet on the serious infrastructure issues at the local level. Basically, what's happening now is they're getting more organised with the uh, shipwreck. Um, there is all this, uh, the roads that are going to be built to, to, to basically make it easier for traffic to get up and down there. But again, obviously, building roads means that uh, depending when you're building them is going to basically close off. 
the um, the shipwreck. However, you can still get to the shipwreck via the sea. So I think the boatmen must also uh, be happy as well because it might mean more trips by boat uh, for them and more people to go on the boat trips. If you can't see it from the top, why not see it from the bottom and get a bit closer to it? But anyway, we can keep an eye on that story. I know that's an ongoing thing at the moment. Uh, it's also linked in as well with the fire from last year uh, where there was a lot of damage up there as well in that location. And also as well, the ongoing thing with the Sheikh of Qatar, who's uh, an effectively bought land or the rights to buy land around that area as well so it's all a very complicated situation that is still ongoing uh, but also it's a very important uh, driver for the market here in Zakynthos as well anyway uh, another little story that we've been following here is the uh, cemetery in town uh, Zakynthos mayor Mr Akit Ak Atakis, I got his name right, uh, was called to answer the issues of the restoration of the first cemetery for which the municipal authority has received strong criticism four months after the Medicaid caused severe damage and the area it still remains in a very bad condition. You might remember I covered that uh, a, a week or so ago, that story. The mayor noted that the goal of the municipality is to proceed with a complete intervention in the area, which he says has been abandoned for many decades, noting that in a year from today, he would like to call journalists to announce what he received and what he has managed to change in that important space. Anyway, Mr. Ariakis uh, stated that in the next two days, work of removing the trees that have either fallen during the storm or turned dangerously uh, is to be completed. He noted that the restoration work was extremely difficult and time consuming, while he mentioned that there was only one workshop on our island that could undertake this work, and that was one of the factors for the delay. Regarding access to the public, the mayor noted that at, that it had to be done with absolute safety uh, in the presence of guards. So basically they're going to put uh, some form of security uh, for people to be able to go in because they're saying that it is not safe in there. He also said this planning we did, uh, we, we did not, uh, sorry, this planning we did did not go well as there are points for which the guards could not take responsibility, he said. Finally, the mayor announced a comprehensive effort to change the face of one of the cemeteries, which had been for many years abandoned. The paths have not been paved. The grass and green areas have not been cleaned while the canteen is abandoned and without a license. I didn't even know they had a canteen in there. <laughs> is that where people go at night, I wonder? Yeah. Uh, anyway, the mayor said stressing the need for renovation works uh, intervention for water supply and lighting. He also noted that the available spaces where there is possibility of new burials is an archaic exploitation and is taken and it needs to be corrected. And I know what he means there. Basically, in the areas where nobody's been buried, it's literally a, a bit of a field down there. There's no direct walkways down there and obviously uh, makes the, the job for the grave diggers difficult and also people attending funerals, they're difficult as well. Anyway, he said there has been a lot of requests from citizens for compensations as the monuments of their families were destroyed by the trees and the roots. And this request, he says, has been met with a series of legal obstacles. And he said they need to be removed. Finally, when asked about the approvals that must be obtained from the Ministry of Culture, due to the fact that the area is designated a historical site, he uh, noted that, of course, no intervention can be made without observing the law. However, there are urgent interventions which the Ministry of Culture cannot approve and prevent. So anyway, again, that looks like that is an ongoing uh, situation in the cemetery at the moment as well. Anyway, um, last little story at the moment. Uh, Travelling between the Gulf of Corinth and Saronic using the Corinth Canal is still on hold at the moment because of a landslide. Yep, they had a landslide in the Corinth Canal. And that happened on Friday, the 15th of January. Now, the Corinth Canal's uh, company that manages that strait said on Monday that the repairs are taking longer than expected than the original deadline of reopening the canal, which should have been yesterday, uh, the 19th. Anyway, the company said the canal has been closed since last Friday after a section of the wall near the waste treatment plant 
uh, there actually subsided, and that is on the Peloponnese side. Anyway, it added that the intensive work is being carried out and to restore the operations of the canal as soon as possible. So, Bruffy, if you're thinking about moving your yacht, mate, I would think again, uh, or anybody else is thinking about moving their yachts through the Corinth Canal. Uh, I've always wondered if you can do a trip through the Corinth Canal on a boat. Somebody let me know if that's possible. I'd like to know. And a bit of good news, which uh, apart from the mail, uh, another bit of good news yesterday. I got a lovely message uh, from a, a Sonny Fledger from Opus. Uh, Sonny told me that he'd been doing an interview uh, with a magazine called Athens Calling .gr, And there is an article that's up online. He shared it to my Facebook page. Uh, talking about Life is Life was chosen by AthensCalling.gr as the song of the year. Oh, bless them, uh, for New Year, uh, because they say that song encapsulates everything about what's going on at the moment. It also uh, says this is what we should be uh, thinking about. Life is life, and uh, it's a good, happy, cheery song. One thing he did say in his interview was that it was one of Maradona's favourite songs, and I actually <laughs> found a video of Maradona dancing to the entire song during a uh, final between, I think it was Napoli and Marseille, I think it was, in, uh, in the football circles uh, of him dancing to it. So anyway, uh, he also hinted Sonny, and I know this from last year, uh, meeting up in Graz and also with a lovely friend of ours, Stefan Hammer. Maybe, maybe uh, Opus are in their final year uh, they've been in the business since 1973 and they are getting ready to basically hang up the uh, instruments and retire. So they, their plan is that 2021, it was their final year of touring uh, before their final concert in Graz in, um, uh, in Austria uh, at the Opera House with the orchestra uh, for their final shows. Um, they are talking about maybe coming back here to Zakynthos and doing a concert here. Uh, they last did a concert here back in 2012, which I was involved in with Stefan. And um, hopefully uh, that may come off. So that is something to look forward to. Fingers crossed. Everything sort of sorts itself out. Uh, we get back to some remnants of normality uh, and um, they will might, with a big M, hopefully uh, do a concert here in Zakynthos in the summer. Uh, whether it'll be a free concert or not, I don't know. That's what they did last time, but I'm not going to put the pressure on them to make it a free concert after last time. Uh, but anyway, we shall, we shall wait and see. Anyway, um, just to remind you that today is a broadcast day. Uh, I will be uh, broadcasting this afternoon, hopefully all going well. I'm still waiting to get my other broadcast laptop back. It's been in the shop. Uh, it's had to have a complete reinstall, but I have a plan B that I will put into effect. But three o'clock this afternoon until five o'clock UK time, seven o'clock until, um, uh, what is it? No, uh, three o'clock till five o'clock. Five o'clock to seven o'clock Greek time. There we go. Even can't remember myself. Uh, and thank you for those people who sent me shopping lists yesterday of tunes uh, for requests and inspiration. Thank you. I was going through some of them last night. Absolute bangers. And I look forward to playing them. Also, just another little bit of information for you. I'm going to be doing a show on a UK radio station as well called Beats uh, down in the Kent area in Margate. Can I say a big shout out to Ben Warner? I'm going to be producing um, two shows uh, a week for them. I'll give you more details on that as is when we finalise everything for that. So again, that'll be a different format to what I've been doing with the request and inspiration. So just to let you know, and what's more, you can listen to that on your radios, in your cars, driving about. You don't need to be online as it were to listen into those shows. And I'm really quite excited about doing that as well. So just to let you know, he, he, uh, G Ginge is also going to be banging them out around Kent as well. Anyway, let's have a quick look, see who's tuning in. I can see a lot of people leaving comments as well this morning. Uh, Steve Hinkling is watching. Nice to see you, Steve. He says, Gallimera. Alan Woodhouse is watching. Nice to see you as well. John Stowell is looking in. Mark Pumphrey is also looking in as well, Raffredge Buddy. Amanda Gregory is looking in. Nice to see you, Amanda. Nice catching up with you outside the Chinese shop yesterday in buying their stuff from in there. Um, Sakis Theolodis is also looking in as well. Nice to see you, fella. Give you a big shout as well. Christine Brown is watching as well. Uh, Delia Gutsetti is watching as well. Uh, Dennis's daughter, nice to see her. 
Chris Neal is also tuning in. Nice to see you tuning in as well, Chris. Uh, Scott Williams is watching as well. Steve Hodgson is watching as well. Uh, Tim Crystal from Oxfordshire is looking in. He says, morning, buddy. Uh, Rose Wood is watching as well. Emma Marku is watching. Uh, Gina Govalis is also watching as well. Nice to have you tuning in, Gina. Uh, Tracy Jones is watching as well. Mark Leggett is watching. Barry Leatherdale down there in Essex is looking in. Also, Bruffy is watching as well. Paul Bruff, uh, I think he's still in Prague at the moment. He's left his yacht at the moment in <laughs> here in Greece. So it's nice to have you tuning in, mate. And uh, yes, we must talk about Leek at some time as well. Also, Taff Blight as well. Old Raff Reg buddy, nice to see you looking in as well. Stuart Butcher tuning in. John Hollingsworth tuning in. Uh, Taff Bright says... Uh, Morning, Gins, from a wet whale. Stay safe, mate. Oh, he's got and see more uh, from a wet from a wet eel from wet eels. Wet eels is that a place in Wales? I'm not sure of that. <laughs> All the only eels I know are the ones you eat. Anyway, Amanda Gregory says discriminating against those who can't afford to be vaccinated. Now that's an interesting point you raised there about. Um, do we have to? Well, at the moment, as far as I'm aware, the vaccine is free at the moment. Um, and I think it's a case of you get what you're given. This I'm talking about Greece now. You get what you're given. I know Tim was saying that certain that uh, he'd rather have one of the vaccines rather than the other. I know uh, Les Paul was saying that one of the companies that's making vaccines at the moment hasn't been one of the most successful producers of vaccines in the past. So, again, uh, if you're having to pay for it, I think, yeah, you should be able to choose what you want. But then again... It should be a right and it should be for free as well. The government wants us to have it if they're going to infringe on your lives. And also, technically, you've paid for it in your taxes, for God's sake. And this is the thing we're saying about socialised medicine in uh, America is the fact that because you don't have a socialised medical infrastructure in the same way that European countries do and some Latin American countries have, it means then that you haven't got a start point for even giving the vaccine out because everybody's having to rush the private sector to get the injection. So therefore, that puts you behind the game in trying to roll out any reaction anyway. So again, that's a good point. Will we have to pay for the vaccine? I think in Greece here, we won't be paying for it. But interestingly, they're wanting you to pay for, for tests. Um, if you want to come away or go away somewhere at the moment, you've got to pay for a test to say that you're not COVID positive, And then you're being charged £120 for a test to be conducted, which again, uh, smacks of, oh, we're going to make some money out of this, which has been the case all along, I think, with a lot of what's been going on. Anyway, uh, Tim Bristol says he is so wrong with that statement. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what he means by that. But anyway, uh, I'll probably find out. How do they know what is going on when no one knows with this virus? I think he's talking about the uh, our prime minister here. Now the UK are out. We need a visa to work there, which is loads of paperwork. Yeah, I'm afraid. Um, I know people were asking me yesterday, did I know anything more about uh, people being able to come and work over here at the moment at the moment no nothing really as in firm confirmation of uh, we've heard this talk of visas at the moment they're still trying to get people to get residence permits changed um, for people here on the island the plus side is because you're already here and you're in the system working is obviously going to be easier jobs is going to be easier to get that could effectively mean a bit of a pay rise as well. For those people who come in from outside to work, at the moment, it is a big unknown at the moment as to uh, what will be done to make it easier. And also the cost of visas, if visas are required for paperwork, I think, again, we still don't know. It's still a, a work in progress at the moment. However, if you hear anything, let me know. If I hear anything... I'll let you know as well, all right? But cheers for that, Tim. I appreciate that, mate. Uh, in fact, don't you have a residency permit, Tim? Just a quick check on you with that, all right? Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenbo Hobson is watching as well. Matthew Long is watching. 
Uh, Dave Cramp is watching. He says, hey, bro, have a great day. I plan to. Good on you. Also, Donna Bird is tuning in as well. Nice to see you, Donna Bird. It's been a while. Uh, Lindsay Lamb is watching as well. Paul Carterton is watching. Amanda Gregory says, a whole lot of cleaning needed in the hotels due to being closed up for almost 18 months. Yeah, there'll be jobs going there. And you know what? This is another interesting thing that you've just raised. Trying to find cleaners was nigh on impossible. Honestly, you'd think, oh, cleaners, easy people to get to work. Trust me, no. Big shortage of cleaners at the moment um, because obviously uh, people, uh, you know, if they're doing a good job, they're people you, you hang on to. And I know last year uh, a lot of people uh, went back to their countries of origin. Uh, a lot of Albanians that would work were not coming over to work, etc., etc. And there was a massive shortage of cleaners. And trust me, I know with Jane, when she was managing the villas, trying to find good, reliable cleaners are worth their weight in gold. So trust me, there might be more jobs for cleaners coming up uh, because people coming from outside the country to work might find it diff difficult to, to, to do work or find people. Uh, Denise Williams is watching as well. Nice to have you there. Uh, Steve Hodgson says, happy days, Jeans. Don't forget Factor 50. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Yes, I'm looking forward to when I can break out the Factor 50 or maybe the Factor 100. What do you reckon? Uh, Kevin Williams is also tuning in as well. Alf Ling is watching. Catherine Wildridge is watching. Emma Marku says, morning, Jeans. Have a good day. Donna Burns <laughs> say morning. Morning. Jane Belvins is watching. Teresa Michael is watching. Oh, Claire Cullen is watching as well. Heather Flynn, James McCann, everybody in his man. Also, a big shout out to Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Margaret Cattle. Uh, she is one of the people from uh, the uh, Greece's uh, Daily Bulletin board. Thank you for allowing me to share uh, my podcast with you as well. Great. And it's also nice to have contacts in other parts of Greece, not just here in Zakynthos. So you see everything across the country and in some ways how we might live in different areas we may have things that are the same but on the other hand we have a lot of things that are kind of applicable to where they live and living in Zakynthos people say oh it's crazy in Zakynthos and you think well it's just as mad in Crete uh, it's just as mad over there but uh, it's nice to find that there are things that are the same and things that are different, even though we're within the same country. And I do like the fact and also the interaction as well from there. So anyway, EC says thank you from Tulo uh, as well. And uh, one day, hopefully, when all, we, we might pass through when we're going skiing, all right, <laughs> on the way to the Peloponnese, uh, if the ski resort's open, which everybody's waiting with bated breath to see what comes of that. Anyway, Brian Hope is watching as well Maureen Monroe is watching um, Dave Cramp says great news uh, on your Radio Kent broadcasting work yep look out for Beats Radio that's on the way uh, and Amanda Gregory did you get your whisk no I didn't um, I'm going to have to now start checking the uh, shops where they um, supply uh, it sounds like we've got a bit of a cat fight going uh, where they supply, uh, you know, stuff for businesses, you know, in the catering industry to probably get a whisk. How is it hard is to get one of them old fashioned whisks where you crank the handle and the two little things go round. Can't find them anywhere at the moment. But if any of you know where one is, um, we're, we're coming for it. Anyway, Dave Colwell in the United States is watching as well. Lovely to have you tuning in, fella. Right, that's it from me. I better go. I'm burbling on. I've got a lot to do today. So don't forget, any requests, dedications, pop them in the comments below. Broadcasting 3 o'clock UK time, 5 o'clock Greek time. Uh, going out live. Going out on Mixcloud. Going out on Twitch. Going out on Magdalena's uh, Facebook page. Going out on my Facebook page as well. And also on LinkedIn and uh, I think Twitter as well, all right? As well. I'm going out on so many platforms, I can't keep up with it. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll see you again. You take care. And we're now going to open all our cards and the parcel that we should have got over Christmas. Anyway, ta -ra. See you again later. Have a great day. And you too, Donna Bird. ta -ra.